This video is going to be about the product rule and simplifying square roots. The product rule is really quite simple and you're going to find it pretty useful as you work, work with square roots. So all the product rule says is this. If we have two numbers, let's say the number a and the number b, and we're given the square root of a times the square root of b, we can multiply the a and the b together and put them under a single radical sign. In other words, the square root of a times the square root of b equals the square root of a times b. Here's an example of how it could be useful. Let's say we have the problem the square root of 2 times the square root of 8. Well, 2 isn't a perfect square and neither is 8, but I can multiply the 2 and the 8 together. So the square root of 2 times 8 is going to equal the square root of 16. 16 is a perfect square, and so I'm going to end up with a 4 as the solution, as the answer to this multiplication problem. Here's another example, one you might find even more useful. First, we have to start with uh, talking about the rule again. So let's say we have the square root of 8. We have the square root of a times the square root of b equals the square root of a times b. That's our product rule. Now, we have an equation, so we can write that equation in the reverse order. In other words, I can say the square root of a times b equals the square root of a times the square root of b. Here's how we can use this. So let's say I'm given the problem. I've got to find the square root of 18, but 18 is not a perfect square. So I'm going to ask myself, what two numbers can I multiply together? In other words, what factors of 18 can I find so that, so that one of those factors is a perfect square? Well, 18 is 9 times 2. So let's rewrite the square root of 18 as the square root of 9 times 2. Now I can write this under two separate radical signs the square root of 9 times the square root of 2. Taking it a step further, I know the square root of 9 is 3, so I'm going to end up with the square root of 3 times 2. This is called the simplified form of the original problem. A simplified form, one of the rules, would be that for a, to simplify a square root, you have to be able to remove any square roots from the factor that's under this. Of, you have to remove any square root factors that are under the radical sign. In other words, a factor of 18 is 9, because we have 9 times 2, and I'm going to remove the 9 by taking the square root of the 9 all by itself, getting a 3, and I'll have 3 times the square root of 2. Here's a slightly more complex example. So let's say we have the square root of 48. I want to find out what two factors are there in 48 so that one of them is a perfect square. Well, 48 looks like I can divide it by 4, which in fact I can. I'm going to get 4 times 12. So I have the square root of 48 equals 4 times the square root of 4 times 12. I'll put this under two radical signs, the square root of 4 times the square root of 12. The square root of 4 is 2, so I'm going to have 2 times the square root of 12. Now, before I can decide that I'm done, I've got to ask myself, could I have simplified the 12 anymore? In other words, is there a factor of 12 which is a perfect square? And in fact, there is. 12 is 4 times 3. So I can rewrite this once again as 2 times the square root of 4 times 3. I'll make two separate radical signs. 2 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. I'll take the square root of 4, which is 2. So I've got 2 times 2 times the square root of 3. Multiply 2 times 2, and I'll end up with 4 times the square root of 3. Now let's look at the original problem again. Remember that was the square root of 
48. Now, I might have done this faster if I had remembered that 16 is also a perfect square, and I can divide 48 by 16. Doing that, I get 16 times 3, so the square root of 48 is the same as the square root of 16 times 3. I'll rewrite that as two radical signs. The square root of 16 times the square root of 3. I'll take the square root of the 16, and I get 4 times the square root of 3 as my answer. Either way, I get the same answer. The first method I used was slower because I didn't realize that I could divide 48 immediately by 16, but that's okay. As long as I check along the way and make sure that uh, it is impossible to reduce what I think might be my answer to an even lower form, to a simpler form. And in this case, I was able to. So I did that and got 4 times the square root of 3. Now, we've been talking about square roots, but really the same basic product rule will hold true for any kinds of roots. So here's an example with third roots. I've got the cube root of 3 times the cube root of 4. Neither of these is a perfect cube, but I can multiply 2 times 4 and get the cube root of 8. 8 is 2 to the third power, or 2 cubed, so the cube root of 8 is going to be 2. Basically the same principle we used, the product rule, uh, as when we were dealing with square roots. Simplifying a cube root is going to involve the same process. Here I'm looking for two factors of 54, which multiply together, two factors which multiply together and give me 54, and one of those factors has to be a perfect cube. Well, 54 is 2 times 27, so I've got 27 and 2, making up 54. Let me put my cube root in here. I'll rewrite that as the cube root of 27 times the cube root of 2. The cube root of 27 is 3. 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. So 3, whoops, times the cube root of 2. This will be the simplified form of my original problem. And that's about it. I'll see you next time.